Right gang, I'm getting ready for this. This is the Mini Electric, and I am going to drive this from here, Sandyford, uh, all the way to Port Leash. Now, I don't normally do range things with electric cars, so I don't drive them to Cork or, you know, Dublin to Cork and back again in one day, because I never do that anyway. In any ICE engine car, I don't do that, so why would I do it with an electric car? But I do this commute pretty much every Monday, from Dublin to Port Leash. I pick up a car and I bring it back home, it's about 85 kilometers, give or take, door to door. And this is a mini electric, it's fully charged. I'm gonna drive it from here to Port Leash and see what the range is when I, got, when I get there. See how much electricity I've used and whether it's able to do it. Rules, I drive this like I drive any other car. Not gonna give it any brakes, not gonna slow down, not gonna drive it 90 when I should be driving it 100. I am gonna to keep to the speed limits. I am gonna use active cruise control or cruise control whenever I want or whenever I can, just the same as I would do in any other petrol or diesel model car, don't you? Let's uh, start this journey straight away. So a few details on the Mini Electric. This is Mini's first time into full electric mode, although BMW, its parent company, has a lot of experience with electricity and should know how to do this very well. It's powered by a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery that gives it a range of up to 233 kilometers on WLTP rating. It can do 50 kilowatt fast charging and gives 80% charge in 36 minutes. This is obviously detailed from a website. You can get a full charge at home in about four hours and 20 minutes using a 7.4 kilowatt charger. So I didn't get it at that. It was about that, I suppose, to get a full charge and I got it home. The electric motor gives 184 horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque. It's about 7.3 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. So this Mini is 1,365 kgs weight. It's 1.3 tons, if anyone's wondering. That's 145 kgs heavier than a Mini Cooper S three-door. Now, 145 kgs is a chunky man in the back seat of the car, essentially. So it is a bit heavier. Prices go from level one, 27,764. Level two is 30,155. And level three is 35,445. So that's different trims, won't give you different range. The Mini E or Mini, El Mini Electric will be taking on the Honda E, which eventually we'll probably get it here in Ireland sooner or later. Come on, Honda. Uh, Peugeot E208, the Corsa E, the Renault Zoe, and the Volkswagen ID3 are all kind of lumped into this one segment. So it's a tough segment. It's going to get tougher later on this year with the ID3 being launched. Okay, so I'm going to sit in now and set my car up to uh, suit my E. I'd like to be a little bit closer to the steering wheel. Right, start her up. Well, that's good. Okay, so, so this camera can see, I hope this is the battery condition. I am at a 100% charged. It tells me at the top that I can only do 159 kilometers. That's not very much. <laughs> okay, select profile to assign, whatever. Yes, I don't know how to do, is that touchscreen? It is touchscreen, oh, very good. Uh, connect a new mobile device, we'll do that as well, yep. Yeah. No bother. Okay, we are loaded, nice. Okay, as Bluetooth is easy. My car has been ozone treated. Don't know if that does anything, but it feels reassuring that uh, I, I'm being treated by ozone. Okay, D. And wait now, is there a way of resetting? I turned on the windshield wipers. That was thick. BC, give me that. Okay, so we're going to reset the mileometer. The trip computer is down there. Okay, so it's at zero. 159 kilometers charged. Lads, this is not going to be good. Is there a way of making this thing go into... No, I shouldn't do that. I want to make sure it's not in low energy, high energy recovery. Low energy recovery, right. Sport, green, we go green. We go green, E-Drive, right. That's as far as, that's obviously helps the range, right? So here we go. Didn't give me any more range. <laughs> the usual electric, electrical drone comes out here we go okay so rules like I said at the very beginning of this I'm gonna drive this like a normal car right this isn't about trying to get the maximum range from a car this is to replace a petrol car so I drove here 
in a 1.5 TSI petrol engine car uh, and had no fear whatsoever leaving home with, with not enough petrol to get there, I had enough petrol. Now I have plenty of electricity to get me home, but can it do it in an efficient enough way that um, I can get there without having to charge up or without feeling nervous about it? You know. My, my shoe is squeaking on the brake pedal. That's how quiet it is in here. This is uh, Sandyford Beacon Hospital, all around that area. It's pretty, it's a busy spot, you know, you have to be very careful along here as people just change lanes, drift in and out of lanes. They don't know where they're going, you know, these, these car drivers are uh, ferociously bad at that sort of stuff. I also have to check for cyclists in that cycle lane. Now, we're going to be getting out in the M50 in a minute. Which will get me out of the traffic. Oh, there's that little bit of acceleration that comes from having an electric car. Now, it does charge. Obviously, when I'm decelerating, I'm getting charged. So, my range is going up. It's 160 kilometers now. That's pretty good. It's 100 miles. That's okay. Not great for electric cars, but it's okay. I'm very surprised that BMW and Mini Group making an electric Mini, but not giving it sort of maximum ability, not kind of going all as balls to the wall, sort of let's go make it go very far. It's a small car. So while I'm totally stuck in traffic, I find it very interesting that Mini put a little symbol on my phone. You can see it here where it says Mini safety notes, do not use app while driving. Um, I don't have a Mini app installed, but it's talking about Spotify. See Spotify here at the top? Pretty interesting, I don't know. Don't worry, I'm stopped, like nothing's moving in front of me or anything. How does Dublin people, how do you put up with this stuff? How do you put up with traffic? I look around me and all I see is people, individuals, in their individual Eurobox things. Most of them are fairly dull, uninteresting. It's a Nissan Qashqai, it's an iX35. There's a Honda Accord up there, that's an interesting car. Don't know what that yoke is beside me. Suzuki maybe or something. Fast majority of these cars are just commuter cars. Why don't you cycle? Honestly, save the road for us. This journey is either going to be the most exciting thing I've ever done or the most boring thing I've ever done. I'm not sure what, which one is going to actually tell us any sort of stories. As it's uh, coming up to 10 past 12 in a day, so it's not quite lunchtime yet. See, they've restricted this down to two lanes here for sight access. Get out of the way! Thanks. Change lanes, just change the bloody lane and get out of the way. <laughs> the, the noises of electric cars are not exciting, can I just say? <laughs> the noises are probably the most boring bit of electric car driving is the noise of them. Uh, it's like some sort of alien spacecraft or something. I like the um, speedo screen. That's quite clear, isn't it? And it actually really has a needle there telling you whether you're using or charging electricity, how much. That's pretty cool. I like that. that that's good. Keep that. Now, I haven't done anything unusual here. I haven't turned off the air conditioning. I haven't done nothing. I've, I'm, it's a hot day. It's 17 plus degrees outside. Uh, it's very warm. There's blue sky. It's beautiful. It's just not like Ireland at all. And I'm going to trundle down here and leave the air conditioner on. So this is like, just like I would drive a normal electric, a normal petrol and diesel car. Uh, just going to drive it home. All right, we try and match some speed here coming on the M50. We just change lanes onto the main lane here. I can't get Stevie Wonder out of my head, which I can't play for you. Uh, because the copyright people will be all over me. But, uh, oh yeah. Keep on what a great tune. We go to the middle lane because the truck's going to enter into that lane over there. I notice that I don't get active cruise control in this, just cruise control. Which I kind of like, if I'm honest. So I'm going to set it to 100 kph. And sit back and let the car take the strain on the driving part.
been laying discipline there, driving like a coach, Christian driving. Up. No, I'm bored. I can't help it. This is just boring. I mean, trying to drive like this, being spot on, everything, just trying to keep the lane discipline, trying to drive down the road. So boring. I want to overtake the, the stupid lunatics that are in the middle lane, just driving along. I want to just go zoom by them, but then I'd have to break the speed limit. <laughs> now I have to overtake because they're going less than 100 kilometers an hour. They're going less. So I'm going to resume there now, back up to 100, and do the good Christian motoring overtaking maneuver at 100 kilometers an hour, which is going to get me written off on the motorway on the, on the M50. Excuse me, in your Volkswagen Passat, could you not go a bit faster or get into the lane one where you should be? You're sitting there half asleep at the wheel. Sitting in the middle lane. Now I have to sit in the middle lane as well. See, oh man, the frustration level of driving in Ireland is really bad. I'm right, gonna settle in, shush now. Stop thinking about it. Just settle back, let the car do the thing. For a car that's this expensive, there's no active cruise control and there's no active lane keeping. What's the story with that? 151 kilometers left. I've come eight kilometers. <sighs> Don't make me slow down, Corsa. Go on. Come on. Come on, that's the trick. That's the ticket now. Here's a five series to stay. Look at that. That's a tidy car. That's a good. It's a 2008 520 diesel estate. That's a good car. Complicated, but good car. Now you see, I'm, I'm doing my, the next gear twitching now, it's like bird watching here. Driving on the road, trying to kill time, because I'm so bored by driving 100 km an hour. This is the junction I need to take, which is the Limerick, Cork, Waterford. You know, you want to go down then seven, this is how you do it. This is probably the most dangerous junction on earth. Have you ever checked that out? No. Because you've got a feeder road that feeds onto this section. You've got three lanes of traffic that feed off of this section. And this takes two lanes. This breaks into two lanes here. One goes to city centre in Chicor. The other one goes on to Waterford. So it's, um, it's chaos here some days. I've come 14 kilometres and I have 159 kilometres range left. See, this is where electric cars don't do so well. Electric cars are great around the city. Short burst journeys just zooming from thing to thing because you're constantly accelerating and decelerating like I am right now, it's just kind of feathering that throttle to get up this hill. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of electricity. Whereas on a motorway, these cars don't ever decelerate. So you put on the cruise control effectively and just sit there till it's empty, which this is very short range. We'll see now how far I can get. I have it in green mode. I'm giving it all the chances I can. There's a Toyota Camry taxi. Good choice, sir, for a taxi. The worst part of this is, I have a lot of acceleration ability, a lot of torque I can use, but I can't use any of it because I'm trying to save electricity. I shouldn't be trying to save it, I should be just getting on with the drive, you know. It's very hard to keep it 100 kilometers an hour, that's the limit here is 100, but I need to get by this uh, Land Cruiser to um, pull back in. Sorry, I have to go a little bit faster. Now, now we're settled back in. Another Auris, this is Toyota Auris. No imagination whatsoever. Can you imagine saving up thousands of euros and then going and buying an Auris? Why would you do that? So many good cars out there. 
There's a Lexus CT200H. It's the worst car in the world. Apart from this Antida, that's probably one of the worst cars I've ever driven. CT200H. Don't like them at all. There's a Skoda Superb doing what a Skoda Superb is supposed to do. It's got a bike on the roof, a roof rack. It's, <laughs> it's loaded to the last. The suspension's sitting down in the back and there's five people in it and a hood, the boot is filled to the roof. That's what a Skoda Superb is for, you see. That's, that's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. I've lost a bar of electricity. I've only come 22 kilometers and I've lost a bar already off the top. I have 150 kilometers range left. Now, I know from past experience that the most expensive car, electricity wise, I've had at home from charging was a PHEV. Um, and that's because you have to charge it every day. To make it run on a, the 50 kilometer range, you have to charge the thing all the time. So you might even charge it twice a day, once overnight, full charge in the morning, drive to work, drive back, and charge it again. You know, you can only charge it twice a day. This only has 150 kilometers range. So, I mean, how's it going to, have to charge this yoke? Now we pull into the inside lane. Finally, I can get in there. Tuck in, settle down, let the car take the strain again. So I'm 30 kilometers in, I have 147 kilometers left. Check in again when we change speeds. Okay, so I've just gotten the NACE. That was the most boring 100 kilometers on the whole world. But I've just gotten the NACE here, the off ramp for NACE is over there. Just ahead of me now is 120 kilometers an hour zone. And that stays at 120 all the way to Port Leash. So uh, it's great for the commuter, you know, if you're looking to try and get to Dublin a bit quicker. I reckon it's taken a good 10 minutes off my normal journey to Dublin uh, to pick up cars. So, uh, like, it's, I'm 10 minutes quicker now than I used to be, and it's brilliant. And it starts just up here. Nom, 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 nom. But then some people think it's 100, it's 100 km an hour zone. They don't realise it's 120, so you get the nice bike. There's a Bianchi bike in the middle of that. Very nice. This is on an adventure. I swear to get a bit of clear road. Right, up to 120 we go. Woohoo! Yay, I get to do something other than just sit here and be a passenger. Okay, let's cruise on. There's 115, 116, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, that's 30. 20. There we go. Now, now I'm going to do what I would do in a normal motor car uh, with the. Uh, a petrol or diesel engine is I'm going to sit here at 120 all the way home hopefully very smooth mini very smooth zoom with 144 kilometers that have done 40 kilometers we started with 157 so we've used 17 kilometers range in 40 kilometers. It's all right. We're coming to the end of the three lane piece here. Uh, it turns into two lanes ahead, but still a motorway, so it still stays at 120. Actually, you can do 120 all the way to Cork now. It's an amazing road, actually. Uh, the Green Party want to change this road to 120 kilometers an hour, from 120 to 110. I think they're insane. I don't think it's gonna help at all because the most of the CO, big CO2 emitters are trucks and buses and vans and most of those vans are doing 100 kilometers an hour anyway. Stupid like. Sit rep. We're still going, but we lost a lot of range. Uh, so I've done 54 kilometers and I now only have 120 kilometers left. So it's dropped from like 140 down to um, 120 in the last like very short time since I went to 120 kilometers an hour driving now has really dropped down I'm wondering if I can do something to make it more efficient but I don't think I can other than driving slower which that doesn't make any sense I don't buy a car to go slower I buy a car because I want to get somewhere quicker I've lost a quarter of the battery now uh, two bars have gone off the top so that's a quarter of the battery and I only have 118 kilometers left now, not far to go, like Junction, Kildare Town exit is next, Kildare Village is here. 
and then Junction 14 is beyond that. So I don't have a long way to go. I'll make it, no problem. What I'm more concerned about is how fast that, that range dropped, you know, control. Okay, so green is 90% efficiency, is what it says there on the screen in front of me. And I'm in that mode since I picked it up. So that's the most efficient mode. Can't do any better than that, huh? Anyway, just coming up on 60 kilometers done. I have 114 left I can do. So it's doing okay, but I think the 150 kilometers or so when it said when I picked it up, 157 might actually turn out to be right. Okay, I had to swap cameras. That one's um, run out of battery and card. We're nearly there though. Uh, I put up a different camera up there, so I had to stop. I would have had to stop anyway. So I'm not cheating or anything, just trying to keep the thing rolling. I've done 75 kilometers exactly, and I have 90 kilometers left. The, the motorway drone is draining that battery down so quickly. It really is, like it's just, it's eating it. But there's nothing you knew about that. It's just because you're constantly accelerating on the motorway. You're always trying to get further along. I can't do anything to make it more efficient other than getting off the motorway, which is not what I would have done in any other car. All right, so I've just gotten off the motorway coming into Port Leash. I'm on the very edge of it. A random bicycle just sitting over there. Um, just pulled in here, Portage R445 is just in front of me, and I'm going to drive in behind this highway maintenance truck. Uh, sit rep on the mileage. So I've done 86 kilometers. I have half a tank of electricity left according to this little logo here, which will give me a 75 kilometers range. Uh, I do find in this green one, when you lift off, it's like, oh, the brakes properly come on. Why does it do that? Why does it come on so heavy? So trundling now into Port Leash, just on the last bit. Active cruise control is off, just recorded two cameras. That is a beautiful camper van. God, the camper vans around this year are really top class. It's a great car, I have to say, but I know right now, if I was coming down to do business here today in Port Leash and I had to get back to Dublin tonight, I'd have to charge this before I could do that return journey, you know? And it's only 85 kilometers, I'd have to charge. I'd have to pull over here, plug it in. And I know that's kind of par for the course of electricity, but it feels like a backward step. Like if I was in a Kia now or a Hyundai or um, even like a Nissan or something, I'd probably make that journey back in one shot. But there's no way, I, I haven't got the range here. I'm 10 to 15, maybe even 20 kilometers short of the return journey here. Final totals. 91 kilometers done, 50% battery left, 79 kilometers left to go. That's final totals on all of this stuff. Uh, pretty straightforward, actually, it's all right. Would you believe that after 10 years of making these videos on YouTube, I forgot to say the last final phrase on that video. I can't believe I did that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've hit the subscribe button by this point. If you want more of these kind of range tests, I can arrange them. So uh, let me know if you want them in the comments down below and you can support this channel from multiple ways also in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time I will see you on the far side of 10 years. <laughs>